of our championship, we're just done with the first semi-finals match. We had, uh, you know, Super JJ versus Legend uh, Legendarin, who ended up uh, winning. 3-2 to two was a pretty close, uh, you know, the, the almost the interesting last Boyd. series. Last, last game, that Boyd is. was just yeah, insane. Yeah. Probably the, one know. of the most tense matches I've ever casted. Well, with RDU and Life Coach, it's hard to top. But I'd say it's probably uh, one of the most interesting ones. So the next one we've got, the second semifinals, we've got uh, RDU is going to be playing against Visual. Visual, again, one of the players who didn't really know what he'd be getting into, I think, once he, he joined the tournament. Uh, he was hoping basically to attend for the experience, and he's done a lot better than he thought he would. Yeah, it's been a pretty good experience for him, I'd say, overall, yeah. Yeah. so far. And he's I, already top four, right? So yeah, Not bad for your first go at it, right? Yeah, yeah and it's uh, good of half K. Right. Yeah, already in the pocket. Yeah, and we can see the bracket now. But I think for Visual, like he needs to continue with what what he seems as the positive mindset of just like really happy to be here. Just want to see what I can do, but just enjoying it already. And uh, I think that actually helps relax you, as opposed to thinking, Probably. oh my god, I'm up against RDU next. You know, hell of an opponent, and thinking that like. I can uh, make it. Yeah, yeah. Just say, you know what, I'm just going to enjoy the match. He's been playing well enough to to get through so far, so he's doing something right. Yeah. yeah. He just needs to get those double mana verms. <laughs> just keep getting those and you'll be yeah. just fine. I mean, I think RDU would uh, get a little bit salty about that. That being said, <laughs> we do need to watch the video about those players, see what they have to say about the event. You'll see just how happy Visual is to be here and how much RDU wants to win the tournament. Hi, my, my name's Daniel. Uh, I go by the nickname Visual. Uh, originally from Australia, but I'm currently living in London and actually I entered this competition through the UK qualifier, which I ended up winning. And here I am into the main tournament. I'm just absolutely ecstatic, just over the moon. I mean, I never expected to get this far and, you know, win or lose, it's just a great experience and, yeah, I'm just loving life. The biggest challenge is professional players do probably understand the game a bit better than I do and just trying to bring myself to that level which, and I'm trying to do it as quick as possible. I, you know, I want to say you know, I'm going to go and win it but truth, truth be told I'm hoping I can just get through at least the first best of five and just take it from there. My name is Dima Gado, I'm also known as RD and I play for Team G2 Esports. I am from Romania and uh, I came here to win the tournament. This has been the most intense day of my life. I literally started by losing the first two series. I wanted to basically go home because I thought there is no way out. But I heard that there I still might have some chances. I tried my best, I won the last series, some results happened exactly as I wanted them to happen. And then in the tiebreakers, while my opponents were shaking and tilting, I managed to pull myself together play some good strong Hearthstone and uh, manage to get myself through. I am feeling really good about tomorrow because it's a fresh new start for everybody. It doesn't matter if you win the group or if you get second in the group or if you win the tiebreakers, you can just not predict the results. Anything can happen. Uh, you hear that confidence in RDU's voice. <laughs> like, everybody around me was tilting. It was like the apocalypse, but I, I stayed calm. And I, I am pulled legend. through. And played some strong Hearthstone. Yeah, some very strong Hearthstone. Yeah, so, well, it was good. It's very, very like enjoyable to, to hear those opinions. Yeah, of the course, players, right? That, that's what I love about RDU. It's just <laughs> any time where he, like, you know he talks about the tournament he's attending, it's always, you know, how how good he thinks his lineup is, how powerful <laughs> he thinks it is, and when he loses, no salt. He's just like, yeah, it, it happens. You know, I will win eventually. It's the long term that, that matters. But he yeah. seemed very stressed out. And then then he's like, well, I made mistakes here and there, and <laughs> right. uh, here and there. So. List every misplay. Yeah, 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 exactly. So he, he's well. one of the players that um, is really taking hard on, on mistakes on, from himself, but at the same time he acknowledges them and wants to improve. That's a, that's a feat for, for a very good player in future, an example. Yeah, like you have to have that, uh, I think, that feature in order to, I mean, that trade right to improve, because some people who are blindsided by their own, you know, they, they think they're just, they, there's nothing to improve. They think they're playing just fine. It's all the RNG that happens. Always, right? you know, it's the yeah. shredders Faster, that don't work right? out. Faster. It's the arcane missiles. Uh, yes, there's some of that, but overall, you do have to learn a lot of stuff. Even the mulligan phase takes forever to master. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we see visual with the tempo mage that we know he's holding. He's also playing a uh, Reno warlock, if I'm not mistaken, yep. as well as a face hunter, which is actually really solid against RDU's warlock and his aggro pally. Yeah, the, the lineup actually favors Visual, I think. Visual, yeah, I think. And um, RDU wants to take advantage of his experience and knowledge of the game against Visual because Visual is a 
let's say, intimidated player, right? He's new to the game. He's yeah, right, he playing, doesn't so. do that many tournaments. Yeah, yeah he, just, he just actually has, I mean, uh, there's not a lot of people with uh, more experience than Adiyu, actually. He's uh, been playing at a high level for quite a long time, and, uh, and obviously Visual's on the other end of that scale. He t went to play in the tournament just because he thought, why not? So, you're completely yeah, correct, the experience is probably going to show through here, especially because even in Visual's last set, although he won, he definitely showed some sort of shaky plays. Yeah, so, some of those that didn't seem styling. optimized. And Adiyu will just punish that, and, um, and I think Adiyu going into this, knowing Visual's not he, even though he's uh, an unheard of player, um, he still has uh, a lot to learn in terms of uh, playing right. optimally. So Visual as well, I think, took out Tice in the group stage uh, really, really convincingly. If, I'm not, if, I, if I remember correctly, Tice brought up the fact that Tempo Mage really took him off guard and uh, Visual with a good start ended up taking that deck and carrying it forward. So this could be a bit of a, re a revenge from RDU uh, for Tice. But. Yeah, and we've said that um, across the weekend, where with so many decks that are actually viable, it's hard to plan for everything. And uh, even Visual's lineup overall, Rena Locked Hunter, I think he's the only Hunter that we've seen. Yeah. Um, and then Tempo Mage, again, not common in this tournament specifically. So all these plays used to playing against a certain set of decks, and you throw three that you're not, not really too common. Maybe the Reno Locks the most common about out of the three. So they're definitely going to throw players off. Yeah. So here we might see the uh, one of the only cases where playing Peddler on the coin is not correct is when you want to coin out the M Gang boss. That's yeah. about the only time where you do not go for a coin Peddler on turn one. Yeah, agree. Or if you do really want to have that Twilight Drake on turn three, but in this situation, right? Because you do so you do, you get one card, but you sacrifice you know one health on the Drake for that play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the M Gang boss on turn two is um, especially devastating in uh, most of the situations here against the Paladin. Unless that would be Blissing Confine, for example. Yeah, that would be a really good outcome, though, for uh, for RDU. Picking up Blessing of Might would change the way this game pans out, because right now on 3, not only does he have nothing, but the Imp Gang boss can spawn Imps from the mm -hmm, one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll see what will be drawn for RDU. Like, the Blessing of Might would be really cool. The same goes, actually, for Divine Favor, which will draw two cards, which is not a dead... Well, okay, Would you right. play Arcane Intellect? If the answer is yes, then it's all right. Yeah, it's all right, right? Pretty much. Exactly. But instead, he draws the Keeper of Alderman and uh, only Hero Power this turn. And then do you even want to Hero Power? Because you're potentially going to generate an, an additional minion from the Gang Boss. But maybe that's fine. You can kill it. Like, the thing you're looking for is to have something on the board for that Kings. Yeah. Right? But now, with the bad juggle, means the one was negated. Wait, so it's... It's either you lose the Divine Shield or you lose three, two damage to the face. That's the question. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty tough one. I, I almost feel like you could let it live. Uh, because the Juggler will kill the M-Gang boss and the 1-1 kills the 1-1. If you want to play for value like he's doing, then you're killing the 1-1 to guarantee that your Kings has a target. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Reina Jackson already in hand. Yeah. This is something that might stop RDU in his tracks. Yeah. Just single-handedly. It also means Visual can be a bit more uh, playful and not maybe rely on the, uh, say, the Othering Fast here mm -hmm. this turn for the heal, just to be super defensive. Because if uh, you Reno... Could heal if, the, you could heal the in-gang boss. That's true. If Reno wasn't a card, then playing against a hyper-aggressive deck, you'd probably just drop Fast here at this point for the body and the two heal. Um, but with Reno in hand, like you don't have to focus as much healing on yourself. And like you said, he's going to just heal onto the gang boss, trade into the juggler, create a 1-1, one -one, leave the 2-1 on the board, and he still has a lot of options going forward as well. Yeah, I mean, look at that 5-5, five -five, though, on the Arden Squire side. Hmm. That is an annoying minion if uh, Vassal doesn't have the answer. So you would like to just play the plus 4, plus 4, kill the 1-1 one -one with the 1-1, one -one, and just go face for 5. Yeah, it's that or you go for the Shredder play, which is also not a bad one, but again, that, uh, that board can be cleaned up a little bit with a Hellfire. Yeah. The thing is as well, even the 5-5, five five, he can deal with it over multiple turns, and the face damage, well, we just know it's sort of going to get negated, because that's, he has That's actually he has a lot Reno. safer, right? That's a lot safer. That's actually a very clever move. Yeah, like that a lot from RDU. Killing the 3-3, three three, guaranteeing that if there's a Hellfire, it's going to pass the Warlock's turn, and he's going to lose his board, and I get to play a Shredder on an empty board. Yeah. This is also when you, where you can see how powerful Keeper of Ulduman is. It's just so ha it has so many um, targets that you can just yeah. use on it on. With Creepers, with Arden Squires. Yeah, especially with Arden Squires, it's basically like a... Think Master over Spark in the middle of the, of the ground, I guess. <laughs> middle, middle road 
Tick master. Oh, it's like a it's like a hound master, right? Yeah. For uh, for Paladin to a large extent, on if on on the uh, on his side of the board. Well, it doesn't give the taunt, right? Oh no, but it's uh, it's probably it's a better body though, right? Yeah, it's true. So do you kings the three four or the three three here? Because if you kings the three four, you can kill the Drake. Uh, but then again, if there is anything like a big game hunter, goes down anyway. Do you want to kings anything? Do you, sorry. Do you just want to play Shredder? It's possible, but again, if you're expecting AOE, maybe overextending any further is not a yeah, play. Yeah, that's right? true. That's the. It's really a matter of how much do you expect to be taken by AOE. Do you maybe just play the owl and trade the three three? Because I'll, I'll trade the three three gives you a two one, but it's not it's not something amazing. And you might need it later. Yeah, there's no like great option here. It's just gonna clear the one ones instead. Interesting turn. So it should be the shredder then, right? Yeah. Leroy. Yeah, because I think like playing around AOE by hero power pass definitely isn't the right move as the aggressive deck. I guess you just play the shredder, hope that it doesn't have shadow flame. I mean, if he has it, at least you've taken it out of the way, right? It's like yeah. at some point you have to reset. The problem is with no board. Divine Favor is going to have to be the card that fetches you that refill. Yeah. And Hellfire and actually is looking pretty good because the minion from the Shredder probably isn't going to have three attack. Would you play the Hellfire instead of the Belcher? So no, you, you can you clear can the board and value, leave, right? You hmm? can clear the board and leave yeah. the Drake on, probably. With Hellfire. I mean, you could play the Belcher and milk more value out of the Hellfire because yeah. you weaken everything yeah, a little bit. And you don't I'll have definitely to... go for the Belcher. Yeah, sounds about right because you're not under any danger yet. You have so you can take Jackson. your time. And the Reno will save you if everything becomes uh, way too difficult to handle. Definitely yeah. the correct way to, to play the Belcher here. I like that. But Visual is considering the alternatives and not wrongly so. Could you go for Brand, Peddler? Actually, uh, the Peddler and... Sun Fury. Sun Fury is not that bad either. Against a board like that one, yeah, it does uh, It does solve... Because it does kill most minions on it. So you really don't need the Belcher for defensive purposes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right now. So maybe keeping it for a point where you're going to need the health protection is good. But with Reno, I think Visual is uh, feeling overly safe. Mm. So... Owl on the Belcher. I'm and thinking about the Owl and then Keeper. Blessing of Kings. Oh, I was thinking Keeper aggressive. on the Drake, but yeah, I like Blessing of Kings as well. Keeper on the Drake doesn't do doesn't do anything. Yeah, you're not really looking to HP. Yeah, you're not looking mm. to trade. It's already on three. So it's just like a decrease. Yeah, it, do, it does nothing. Like you, it's just to reduce the. Uh, I think Owl Blessing of Kings is fine. Yep, there's a Blessing of Kings being played on the Palto Shitter. Wow, that's a lot of damage. And now, with the trades, oh. Ardi is getting, the Hellfire is no longer viable. That's a very good move. Yeah, he's yeah. making sure that he's just out of range of any clear that uh, Visual might be able to pull together. It's very interesting. Like, I would have gone face. Yeah. I'm, I'm the player that just, like, you know, I yeah, I mean, you, you, you're bits. playing the aggressive deck, you want to go face. But I think RDU is fine with not doing so because he sees that he's got the, uh, the, the divine, divine favor. favor. I like a little... And he knows he's against Reno lock as well. So if you overcommit and just go face and then Reno does come down, they can probably clear your board, play Reno, and then like, well, I've got no... You need to put yourself in a position to burst and then have follow-up. For if Reno happens, you burst back again Whoa. to reset the board. I was we really didn't surprised. see the PO with Shadow Flame. Yeah, exactly. I was really surprised that he didn't go for for the PO. The PO with the Sunfear Protector is just amazing, clear. But the Elven Archer kills a lot of stuff in a deck like that one, or at least what comes well, out of the hero power. So that might be relevant. You can kill the Owl now or foil it. He does go for the Archer to kill the Owl. Interesting. So. Hmm. Ooh. That is a rough draw for Visual. He's not going to like that one. Definitely not. Yeah, followed by... Divine Favor. Divine Favor. Yeah. Free card draw for free mana. Seems like a very good deal to Pick me. Pick up a Squire and weave it in at the end, because why not? Maybe Bless even Blessing might. of Might. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like, Blessing... The thing is, you have to push with Blessing to force the Reno, if there's one, so that you can then play other things. Well... We'll see what RDU does, but I'd be surprised if we didn't see a Divine Favor this turn. So he wants to trade first. Yeah, get the shield on. 
afterwards. It's an interesting turn. Well, I think it kind of makes sense, right? Because if you trade after, it's on 4 health and it dies to a tiny bit more stuff. And then that Leroy is going to be so bursty. <laughs> I wasn't sure about the AD trade there, you know, he just lost 8 damage. I think, he, like I said though, he's waiting until he can uh, hit for 8, if it still survives, um, and then be able to follow up. And now that he has the Keeper of All the Men, the Minibot and the Blessed of Might, he might be able to provide a follow-up a little bit more, so just playing Reno won't be enough, because mm. at this point in the game, the Reno's like the whole turn, pretty much. Yeah, it's like, so I kill you yourself just, for 15, like yeah. Alex then falls, I burst uh, gets 15. 15 damage. Yeah, yeah. and then like, I've just reset the board, except now I've got more minions. Yeah. Well, we'll see what Visual does. I mean, the second coil gives him a tiny bit more uh, wiggle room as far as what he can do, but it still feels awkward, because if what comes out of the Shredder is not favorable to your coils, then suddenly he's left with stuff on the board. Uh, maybe you double coil Hellfire and hope that nothing comes out of it that has four health. Yeah, that's actually a better move because the only minions that have four HP is either Manhouse, which is awful, of course, for him, or just minion that has one attack. So it's yeah. not a big of a deal. Yeah, like Nerobar, you got the Dragon Guy. That's yeah. about it. Low Rocket Show, that's right, Nat Bagel. But those. Uh, Nat think... Bagel will be annoying. Yeah, very annoying. But that's it. In that deck like that. When he doesn't kill the minions, he's getting greedy and he can, he can be. Because yeah, he's he got the Reno Jacks. Yeah. Six damage from RDU and might be Hero Power Blessing of Might. Well, one of the problems with uh, not using, say, uh, overextending or playing Blessing of Might now, where there's no Blessing, in, like uh, no shields, is that one AoE deals with your entire buffs. But does he think that Visual doesn't have AoE because he hasn't played it? That's the question. That's the biggest question. In this position, what would you do? I would have gone for the Blessing of Might and Hero Power. You saw two blessing, uh, Mortal Cores, so it's pretty damn sure that your 5-1 can die to a just single damage source apart from... Uh, oh, wait, the one Mortal Core was from Dark Peddler. Yeah, yeah. one from yeah. Silver Peddler, and there's another one lying in the deck, so... Okay, no, yeah, no, well, that, so no, I use two coils. Yeah, he's is... Reno Lock. Oh, yeah, oh, right. That's what right. Are we talking Never about? mind yeah. that. <laughs> also, yeah. is he playing two no, no, no. coils? It, he no one plays told the me ones. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You wouldn't surrender the value of Reno for one coil. <laughs> Not worth. Sometimes it's good, but I don't think it's ever that good. Um, yeah, I, I think this is okay. Sylvana Sun Fury could be played, but it kind of makes nothing but a weakening of the board. But if you're not going to play Reno and you're not going to Hellfire, that's as slow as you're going to be allowed to get. Well, Hellfire here has value. I like yeah. it, yeah. Because that five is a lot of damage, never mind the rest of the minions. And I think the thing is as well for IDU, if you continue to try and play around everything that Arena Lock can have, you're not really going to do anything, right? If you can't just right. play around AoE for the whole game, because you will never win. Visual right now is being super greedy about that Reno. I have no one well, of the he, things well, that he may seen, not have he's considered... He's seen an owl, right? Say what? He's already seen an owl. Yeah, he's seen one owl, but one of the things he maybe hasn't considered is that uh, you can't play Hellfire and Reno next turn, so if things go wrong now, mm -hmm. you, can't, you can only play Reno alone, and it's a little bit further down the line that you're able to clear the board. Yeah. I think the idea is, though, that in killing Sylvanas, which you presume there's not going to be a second owl, then Sylvanas steals a minion, the 2 3 is probably going to trade okay versus what's on the board. So maybe he thinks he can get away with just Reno. Reset to 30 in the board isn't already massive. Uh, so, well, you, you're you almost certain to deal five damage to the face. Yeah, pretty much. No matter what, you're, you, you get five that goes through. Keeper of Uldemon could be used even to buffer, uh, to buffer that a tiny bit. I was thinking or about reduce using the Keeper of Uldemon. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about using Keeper of Uldemon on the Sylvanas. And Truth of Red Down. Yeah, but then you don't. You waste you the damage, right? You waste the damage, and you don't have uh, the one one, the additional one one. Wow, good outcome there. Very good outcome for RDU. It's he it, it deals a lot of damage. I really like the switch from the weapon because it. This is the turn when you actually what you said about the health card is very important right now to have that additional burst. Yeah, and right now that's what Visual might not have thought about last turn, which is. If I play Sylvanas with Sun Fury, my turn 9 cannot be Reno Hellfire. It's one or the other. So now he might be forced into going for Shredder plus the Defender and then go for the Hellfire, wipe the board, 
then play the Reno. Yeah. Go back to full health, go with Jaraxxus, and from there reevaluate. But one of the things that Jaraxxus does is set his max health to 15. And when it sets his max health to 15, RDU is able to burst him down. I mean, Leroy yeah. deals six. Blessing of Might times one is an extra. And the truth of a champion deals with the boosted Pilot Shutter. Right, exactly. Yeah, so it's not a good minion at all. Nothing here feels very good. And if he goes for Reno now, he is mitigating damage, but he's going to have to pilot this very cautiously. And I don't even know how easy that would be. Uh, use BGH Shadow Flame then. If you wanted to just clear off. It's not the best clear, I guess. Here, right the now? Oh, no, oh. Pa the last turn. Yeah, pre tap, like after tap. He life tapped do down to. Uh, he he life tapped down to 13, and he has 7 mana. Could have gone for BGH and Shadow Flame, but no. it's a bit. Uh, That's very risky. He would actually be dead. Yeah, he's he, taking he 4, would be 5, four six, eight. 7, That's 14 eight. damage. Yeah, he'd be dead. Yeah, he would be dead to Leroy, actually. So he did make the play that kept him alive, but that means. Uh, I mean, now that he has 30 health, and RDU has to start thinking about trading, right? Does he? I mean, I think RDU might trade the 2-1 and the 1-1 away, if anything, if he ever decides to make Reno uh, a 3-3. I don't know if he Two silver in the 2-1? Shadow Flame, man. That thing hurts. That thing hurts so a lot. So the problem is, he's, run he's out of cards. Yeah. So if he kills Reno, that's more of his resource gone. And again, if you if you play around the Shadow Flame, is he going to? Oh, he, he doesn't have like he the is. choice, I think, because Hellfire is an issue. But at least Hellfire leaves your spider alive in the 2-2. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Ooh, the dog. Mind. I lied again, but that 3-4 does not die. So you have to play Big Game Hunter into Shadow Flame. I think you're right, but you can even play Dark Bomb as well, so that's going to work out sort of okay, right? If the second Divine Favor will be drawn for RDU, this will change the entire game. Yeah, it will draw an entire hand, and at that point, Leroy can probably kill uh, in the next few turns, and he can get another True Silver, more weapons. That's a lot of damage taken. I would be very surprised if he plays a Hellfire. He's prepared to be surprised. It looks like he's willing to take the risk. Wow. That's, That's a lot of damage coming in, though. Shredder, I mean, he does contest the board, but how well? I mean, it's not really that great at contesting the board because you have a lot of damage that are divided wow. through small minions. Is, is he relying on his opponent to burst him and then just go straight into Draxus and hope that's enough? I don't hate that. Is that, that might yeah, be the, that line might be play? the only. Because then he's hurt himself and then he's like, well, he's not going to just put all of his minions into the Shredder at this point. Mm -hmm. He's seen Reno, so his opponent should now know that that's out of the deck so he can try and just finish up the game. That might be the case here. And then Draxus will actually just stall out even longer. And the second you get you can spawn six sixes into the Argus, then you know that you should you should presume game over. Okay, this shadow flame into Lothab is such a safe play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no way that RDU can finish. Right. Spawn because he used to blessing of mites already. Already, so there's no burst with Leroy after. Has he played two kings? Divine, fa divine favor. We saw one, but there probably are two. I mean, but there won't be enough anyway. Right. But it yeah, may be, be enough off. over a few turns, but in this case, it's not going to be. Yeah. Uh, we do know, however, that uh, RDU is running Arcane Golem, I think, as a single of. Yes. So okay. that's a total of 10 damage right there that he can get just through minions. So assuming things line up, I think RDU, if Vizual decides to be even more greedy, could get it done. Uh, is there anything that Vizual gets out of the Shredder that's bad for him? Well, I think what Wizard is thinking here is that he can... Oh my god, he's tapping. He's going for the Shadow Flame instead? Yep, looks like it. But he tapped. Now he, be, he can be dead. Why would you Shadow Flame the Shredder? Well, if you Shadow Flame it, you go face first and you get a 2-drop out of it. But the tap was not needed at he all. He might die now. There's a chance that he dies to an oh, Arcane Golem again. or a Kings. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god! That's a card draw. What is he missing? Two mana. He can't possibly find lethal here. He can't possibly find lethal. Hardened Squire. That's a very, Spell. very good card Ooh. to find. Wow. Juggle Unbelievable. Pretty okay combo. Yeah. And this uh, Garrison Commander doing nothing for Vizual. You've just seen the one Hellfire. You've seen the one Shadow Flame. You can't expect an AoE after this. Demon Wrath is the only one that exists. But there's still so many cards in Vizual's deck. The odds on him drawing three 
AoEs by now. It's so low. Right, I wouldn't bet on it. And, and now if there's a Draxus, 100% you're seeing it because of the, the, the fear. Unless Emperor plus Defender. Which Emperor I... and Defender is actually, I think, better option. Yeah, because you get to play... Uh... You can kill the Knife Juggler with, uh, with the Commander. Does RDU win, though? Because Leroy kills the 6-6. Uh, the six, six. The weapon kills the 3-4. Well, well he's one. missing for damage. He's just shy. I mean, he's got it in his deck, though, King. Oh, oh! my god, that, that's it, right? That's game. That's game for RDU. RDU takes it. Game one is going to RDU with that Leroy kill. Leroy into 6-6, six, 1-1 six, one, one into 1 into 3-1. You win. I think, I think yeah. the taps so were very, very The last tap control. without the low step <laughs> was very risky. Oh, yeah. He's using just sucking Golem into it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you oh. worried us for a second there. Well, you oh, sorry, scared I'm, I'm everybody. Just, I have a such a headache. Happy <laughs> Feast of Wintervale. Yep, Leron Jenkins. I didn't see that card for a long time. Yeah, you're about to see it come back. Because already you says this Paladin deck is actually pretty, uh, pretty solid. One of the things that's interesting is that the use of the Keeper of Uldemon, um, initially we thought, oh, it's going to be used very often as an Aldor Peacekeeper. No, no. It yeah, barely pressing. ever is, right? And not in this deck. I mean, in this deck is a very... I mean, even okay. in control decks, you rarely see it. You see, like, Mustard 3, then you buff up a 1-1, one, one, kill a Shredder. Like, yeah. something along those lines. Yeah, but when you think about it, in this in this particular deck, the Keeper of Uldemon is such a great card. It, it acts kind of like a Keeper of the Grove for Druid. Because right. it can either help you push through a taunt or just boost uh, a minion so it will actually deal more damage, which is similar to your uh, to remove. damage from yeah. the Keeper, right? Yeah. But hey, Visual playing a little bit too loose with his life there, I think. Yeah, he saw the yeah. Reno and he's like, I can yeah, do what I yeah. want, right? And he didn't ever draw into heal bot, right? He so never did, but I mean, he did draw a good chunk of his deck. Yeah. Uh, he had a Malganus left somewhere. Yeah. Well, he might have counted on that at some point, and we'll see. The aggro hunter from Visual, which I think should have the edge in the matchup like this, with the explosive traps, assuming no buffs uh, come out that are too big on the yes. So we Actually, know, the, the, the face hunter is fav favored against every single deck from RDU, right? Yeah, that's the case. Yeah, we know Visual's running two explosive and one snake as well, and I'm sure RDU has that information. Uh, to maybe just, we saw a few uh, run into jugglers uh, with snake trap on the visuals last game, which yeah. was a little bit rough. Changed the game quite dramatically, actually, with those. Six oh was uh, yeah. taken off guard. Hmm. Mini bot just to damage the face. Or do you will just try to outraise the hunter, right? Because he can't outvalue the hunter. He can go. He can't overextend. Trading is just too slow. Yeah, you just can't thinking about the big minions, That's right. It's like, what's your game plan in general? Like, how do you play it like a druid? You know, two mm -hmm. or three minions at a time, and then sit on it, deal as much as you can, start again. I think with the cards he's got as well, like he can um, coin into either keeper or the shredder next turn, um, or even blessing of kings, because blessing of kings will demand an owl, but then that's two mana that you've already done the attack with the blessing of kings, and then the owl is two mana the hunter's using that isn't really damage. It's yeah. damage mitigation, but it's not damage in the race. Now we see uh, Visual using the, the the spider to pop the 2-1, which is obviously an overkill, but he might have felt like he didn't have alternatives. And now we see RDU, you know, he plays one Shredder in his deck, which is just enough in this case to threaten the Leoc and be annoying. I would rather think of the Blessing of Kings. If you play Blessing of Kings, you can kill the Leoc. And, and then still the, uh, have a 6-6 six, six on board. The problem is that there might be a silence from the Hunter. And but. he saw that the Visual is playing two Owls in his deck. Yeah. So there's, a, there's a actually a very high probability of, of having that. I suppose the benefit of the silence, or like the, the redeeming feature of the Silence for IDU is that, well, he still deals with the two one ones on board as a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. So it, it kind of eats up the tempo that the Hunter might try to get through some of his own minions. And you're forcing him to slow down. And if that happens, and you then follow it up with a Shredder, he may not have another answer to yeah. that one. Yeah, but the Knife Juggling will make a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. And the Quick Shot as well. It's a big deal. The hand's almost empty, and Quick Shot's going to cycle, plus kill possibly a Shredder. So we're talking about, uh, soon enough, Visual's going to be able to keep drawing when RDU's Divine Favors are dead. 
Yeah, and also, again, like, they might just hit the situation where he has Divine Favor in hand and versus Face Hunter. Yeah. Not the most reliable Divine Favor in the world. It is does it? nothing. So even if he, did, he gets a quick shot only drawing one card, which, like you said, will be enough for the Hunter just to... Oh, he got the juggler as well. Very nice hit there for Visual. Or do you know this is going to spell trouble? He's going to hope. Oh, muster for battle on yeah. turn five with the juggler for RDU. That it's, might be a comeback for him that he needed. Yeah, it's the in the opposite fashion where Hunter needs uh, juggler muster, uh, juggler muster, juggler unleashed. juggler unleashed to actually come back against the paladin. And on the other side of that, the paladin can do the, uh, the juggle muster. So that's going to be huge. And just being able to just drop the shredder as well. So it's like, well, you can ignore the shredder, but then it just makes his next turn even better. Or if you trade into it, then again he's sort of ahead on the race. Yeah, it's all about slowing down the the opponent. I think. Visual, if he picks up Unleash the Hound, though, is going to be in a great spot. Well, he can also bluff the Snake Trap. His Why not? Trap, right? You empty your hand, set up a quick shot. Yeah, I think that's actually correct. Let's see what are his, what are his options. Ooh, and then Juggler another time. Kind of liking that. And Explosive Sheep. No, it's not. Oh, that would be so perfect. Oh, is the second Juggle going to hit? The, he's been pretty good oh. so far, but this hasn't been... This is worth a quick shot, right? I don't think so. Really? Do you not want to guard your juggler? How much? Well... Are you not expecting Consecrate? I mean, how much does he play... I would rather play the trap, explosive trap. I'd play the trap here. Yeah. Trap. yeah. Bluff, the, bluff the trap. But he does play around... Uh, he gets the other explosive trap out, and he also plays with the maximization of the hero power. So he gets to do it on turn six with explosive... Possibly, and the other two draws. But now look at that juggler from RDU. Wow. Oh, well, at least he, he hit one. Right? Don't don't look at that juggler from RDU. <laughs> Turn your eyes away in shame, for he betrayed his master in the perfect hand dump for visual here. Yeah, Glaive Zuka into trap, into hero power, deal two damage to the face. You don't even care about the knife juggler at this, at no. this point. Not with a trap, not after you've seen one Kings. The only thing that saves those minions is the Keeper of Uldemon, and how much does that really bother you? Yep. When you're so far ahead on the race. You can initiate it, and you're going to win just based off of your hero power. Yeah, and the next turn, it's highly likely that you can play whatever he draws, and then onto quick shot as well. So, to even carry on, and probably hero power as well, if it's not another minion he wants to play. Yep, I agree. Are we going to see RDU play Finley and try and get some sort of armor up? He might be able to win the game because of that. That armor up or the uh, the heal from Priest, all it looks like very little. It removes the hero powers from the game. Completely. Right. They nullify each other, and now it's just a matter of getting the most damage out. Hunters are supposed to win that race. But... So right. now RDU knows that they, if he pops the Mad Scientist, he will get the Snake Trap out. Yeah. Unless it's already in the hand. How much does he care? That's the real question. Well, like he needs to pop the explosive trap at yeah. some point. Yeah. yeah. But do you do it before or after you well, use a Keeper of Uldemon and your juggler to I save it? I suppose he could be, he could trade in to the, um, hmm. yeah, it's, it's whether he wants to pop explosive, then kill the uh, scientist, then pop it, try and pop the second explosive next turn with just the weapon. Mm -hmm. And we'll see whether or not he's able to get himself a hero power he likes. Shapeshift is going to be the best. It was Shapeshift, the rogue hero power, the dagger, ah, there and we the uh, Shaman Totem. Shaman Totem's not bad, but with uh, the possibility of the Unleash. Unleash, it's really problematic. Because when you, d you do get Stone Claw, it's just as bad, because you filled the board up with a bunch of yeah. rubbish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, look at that. that. That Blessing of Might will actually make a huge difference. Six damage to the face, Hunter's at 18. GG. Oh my god. <laughs> runner, runner, quick shot, and that's game. That's just 10 damage. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's over. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they don't call it Face Hunter for no reason. Wow, two quick shots on the deck. It's actually interesting when I think about it. Because not everyone runs two quick shots. Even in the face decks? Because this is really. It's not even a, a hybrid. It's not a hybrid, yeah, it's, it's actually pure face. face. So in that sense, I feel like maybe it's a bit more reasonable. Hmm. Good question. I'm not sure. I, th I, I think from the actual like pure face list, not that we see them that often because everyone's favoring hybrid or, uh, over any of the lists. In the pure face list, I've seen quick shot uh, doubled up. Right, I feel like time. it used to be that hybrids sometimes cut 
uh, like you, you see it kind of mo like a lot of uh, non face decks, but I feel yeah. like quick shot and face hunter is just an auto include twice. What else would you put in instead? I can't really think of anything. Just more minions. More stuff to throw. Yeah. Well, we're gonna see that face hunter again. This time against the druid, and the druid might have a problem if will not pick up the Danas's aspirant or innovates. Yep. And look at that start from visual. Oh, oh my goodness, God. that hand. Double mana worm? Nope, double juggler. And the aspirant at least. Oh, yeah, he, he got the aspirant now. And the swipe, but he's missing the innovates. Ooh. But he has combo for turn nine. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing now until it actually wins yeah, the game. Yeah, until he actually wins the game with right. combo. Now there's a chance that Visual decides to play on tempo for the abusive, but the, the fact that you have double juggler really doesn't give you an excuse. Do not go for it. Is he going for the creeper? Yep, still plays around Aspirant with the abusive sergeant or the Glaive Zuka, depending. Yeah, he has the answer. He doesn't have to do the like the juggler and hope, you know, he doesn't have to trade. Yeah, he does have the Glaive Zuka there, so. Now Visual with a good way to you know flesh up uh, flesh out this this curve. He's got the Lepernomi picked up, which is the best way to complement this abusive. Yep. And you do trade, right? You can't. Do you, do you want to ignore Aspirant? And if you trade, sure you're giving up uh, the prevention of a swipe, but ultimately, can you really afford not doing that? And then if he goes for that, Glaive's look on the following turn is fine. You keep your juggler safe. Yeah. And then afterwards, you start playing those. Yeah, because if you trade, you get the value from the two 1-1s one for one more turn at least. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you traded straight into a swipe. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty okay. Yeah, any extra damage you can squeeze in. What did you say? That's an innovate for low tap. Yeah, but... you play low tap. You want the, the body on the board and then Insane, swipe next yeah. turn. The problem is that if, if Visual is actually very defensive, he will trade. He may trade. And the thing is, it might be tempting if, it, if the Glaive Zuka lands, say, on a two attack minion, because then you use your weapon plus your three attack minion, you trade. That's mm -hmm. five damage you leave. So are you guys suggesting we save the Innovate for the combo? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no, 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 you have to. Go I know, I'm joking, okay, I'm joking, sorry, I'm joking, I'm joking. That was third degree. <laughs> Too deep for me. Three deep, five me. <laughs> all right, Memes so are real. The May Mays. May May Yeah, the May May Well, that's Glaive Zuka. He just wants to drop it on the... I mean, he has just to be worried about swipe, right? Because if he doesn't worry about swipe, then Lothep sticks around forever. Yeah. And he takes a billion damage in the process. And it lands on the Lepernome. That's pretty sweet. The pretty faster it dies, the less likely it gets keepered. In Vigil's position, uh, position here, do you use face? Probably. Yeah, I, I would use face. Yeah, you can get recurring yeah. damage, force a swipe, uh, pick uh, pick whatever you want. Because you can also kill a Drew of the Claw if it falls down sometime you know, later Ooh, on. Actually, that's a good drop. Instead of the swipe. Agreed. Yeah, you can hold off now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, def definitely that. Instead of anything else. Well, see, Force of Nature looked rubbish at first, but now we're looking at it from a removal perspective, and it's looking a lot less ugly. Because you can use it on turn six to kill the jugglers in this case. And There's anything still a problem left over, right? Still a problem with snake trap. That's true. If the snake trap shows up, then you're still in trouble. The owl is already in the hand. So if that druid of the claw is being drawn, it makes no difference on the board. Would you kill? The juggle misses after all is said and done. If you want to protect your juggler, I think you do trade, you gotta right? kill that. You have another juggler, but you don't really have the guaranteed follow-up with the other juggler. And um, if you trade again, swipes not quite as good. Yeah. You're losing a lot of damage with the trade so far. We've seen nine damage being thrown away, but if you don't, you're just losing even more, I think, over the long term. The juggler should In gain this, you more damage. Situations? Yes, yeah. I agree. Now Palace has to play. Yep. I don't see another option. Like You have to get something on board. Just to have an option of Ooh, trading uh, up. Ooh. Juggler snake trap. Because the thing right now is that RDU can check for snake and then swipe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's got to like that. If he sees traps come out, he knows he's able to test for them. Doesn't even have to worry about explosive until he's ready to attack into them. Yeah, but double life jugglers? Yeah, it's pretty trap. scary. Yeah, because even if you swipe, you're only killing one. Yeah, one of the jugglers. Sure. Well, he has two two mana spare for to kill the other. Kill the other one. 
but there's a lot yeah, of damage. Yeah, just because you're prop the snakes. But you do yeah. take six in the process. Exactly. Or something takes six. All right, the owl here might be used unless he wants to trade the scientist and play the snake to get all the traps out. I feel like you don't even trade the med scientist exactly. Just go face. And RDU, however, will be able to check for the snake trap with the powdered shredder, and this combo is already in hand. Doesn't mean much for now. He needs a national of law. Yeah, he absolutely needs to find a way to... Yeah. Just to buy one more, like, right, yeah. an extra turn. Exactly. Without that, I, have, I don't see RDU winning this game. I mean, there's, there can only be four snakes on the board, though, right? Hmm, like, if, like, there can only be like uh, three things that is on the board, which means he can't play more minions than that. And the swipe will kill the two jugglers. So, what's the damage left for visual, like top decks from the, the rest of the game? Well, that's and hero power, right? Right. So, ancient of lore buying one turn would maybe be enough that the combo with the five five yeah. ends up winning. I yeah. just think that the double jugglers right now are the biggest problem, because if you go for the snake trap, it's six damage. This what about force of nature damage. then? Do you try it out? you think it's snake because if it's not snake and it's explosive then you're killing minions for free which is great if it is snake then the trees may be able to kill the jugglers without you taking mm -hmm. 100 damage in the process Ooh. all right he knows what it is and he's not gonna play into it so the hero power that he will just there. not never attack never he's attack. just gonna go yeah, face with yeah. a double roar or something along the way i like that actually yeah really like that yeah and visual now <laughs> well he feels a little scared but Ooh. never mind it's five damage can kill the Palter Shredder with his Mad Scientist, get additional Explosive Trap, which is two damage. I actually like that. If you just silence, trade... And smork. And then smork, yes. You keep the kill command for 10-7. Seems good, man. Seems yeah. good. Yeah. If, you're, if your Owl lives, which it will because the Druid refuses to attack into your yeah. minions, you're going to get an extra five. You will need another Swipe or a Wrath. And well, a, ref, uh, a ref would target the, sure the knife jugger anyway. Pretty okay. But I think RDU may have juggle to as well. Uh, yeah, good trigger. juggle. Good juggle. Not to pull the trigger on that force of nature earlier than he wants, I think. But RDU needs to innovate. That's actually half decent. He can win next turn. If he goes for Savage or Hero Power, go face and then. Yeah. Pick up and the Innervate and win. Then he doesn't need Innervate. He, he has just no wild grows, that's right. He just picked up the lethal. Yeah, right. yeah. That's, that's yeah, the way to. of winning the that's game. The, yeah, it's the winning but play. The problem is he will get 5, 7, 12. He it's dies dead. to many top decks. No, he dies from the board and the hand. Because there's kill command for 5. That's 6, 7, 12. Eight, that's 12. Nine, yeah, that's right. Exactly lethal. So it's kind of unfortunate for you, but this wild growth and Innervate was an out for him to win next turn and this way visual has to leave it's the turn seven kill command that he's been keeping i mean it's, it's kind of obvious that the owl if it didn't die which it wasn't going to since rdu committed to the full face play rdu is nodding his head it yeah he knows <laughs> oh this is the salt face this i mean it was very close yeah it was pretty close that last uh, extra mana that rdu got mm -hmm. really made it closer than it otherwise would have been Yep, so now we're going to see Hunter versus RDU's Warlock, which is Zoo, right? Right, and Zoo... And the Zoo is not that great either. Uh, I think RDU's entire lineup, and we spoke about that, is very weak to that one Hunter deck. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Agree. Yeah, this might be the Achilles food in uh, RDU's lineup. And the Unleashed the Hunter's already picked up. But this Keep opener it. from RDU, though, could stall. Look at that. He may be able to get the uh, the edge just because of this. As long as he dodges explosive traps or finds the defender of Argus to buff his minions. Yeah, defender of Argus yeah. will be the MVP on the knife jugglers. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Do you keep Unleash here? I would keep it, yes. I would keep it because that's the comeback mechanism against uh, Zoo with the knife juggler. Yeah, RDU throws one of the jugglers away, doesn't need two of those. He's looking for Defenders of Argus, is my assumption, eggs to protect against the traps. Just wants yeah. to make sure that he finds a little less of a, I want to keep my board alive. You know, if you play the jugglers, then you're trying to protect them. He's looking for the protectors. Yeah, the creep is such a big draw for visual, because otherwise, although he does want to do damage, hero power turn two never feels great, especially having no turn one play as well as the face hunter. 
Double on leech. Actually, I could drop RD. Explosive traps in the head, and sometimes it's even better than it's uh, from Mad Scientist. Yeah, you have it in your control. head because you can control the timing yeah. of it. Ooh. That's a nice draw, though. Do you like Fair. coin Gangbase? But then you can't coin out the Drafint of Argus. But yeah, that, but that doesn't, doesn't the gang boss give you enough board presence to almost guarantee a good Argus later? Void Terror. But you do want one to, one. to uh, defend the Vargas 1-1s. One because you need the. Yeah, the Vargas past to play. the explosive. Exactly. Alright. And he knows that he's uh, not getting killed by. An example, a Glaive Zooka here. Yeah. I mean, the Knife Jugger is not getting removed by Glaive Zooka, then the problem might be a uh, quick shot kill command, an explosive. Abusive oh, Glaive Zooka abuse. Something yeah. else. Okay, Abusive Sergeant yeah, yeah. and a Glaive Zooka. Yeah. There's, a, there's a few things that uh, Visual could have, but he doesn't have them right now. Oh, this is looking pretty pretty good for Adi, actually, so far. Yeah, but the thing is, that trap in this Unleash basically turned the game upside down if they, they hit properly, if it's timed at the right, uh, at the right spot. Two drops or solid. Or end gang boss. That's the question. Two two drops is appealing, especially since it's a creeper. Uh, which means you can get the one ones out afterwards. Whether you get them through the void terror. If you're doing the two two drops, do you actually trade the juggler into the one one? First, yeah. So well, it could be first but then or after, it doesn't matter, but you do it afterwards because if you do it first, then you have better chances to hit the minions yeah. instead of the face. The yeah. Face, yeah. That's actually a huge increase in chances because it's 66 to 75. Yeah. But if you want to kill the 2 1 to protect your juggler, then it's better to, try to do it. Yeah. So, so he goes for the single juggle. Okay. And that's pretty consistent because if they want to kill. Oh, oh! Wow! RDU! What Justice has been God. served at least partially, but now the he's going to have to contend helps. with this. The yeah. Glaive Zuka helps here immensely. Without the Glaive Zuka, he would push to use Explosive Trap, and then Explosive Trap gets diminished. Like it's demolished by the defender value. Exactly. So right now, visual. He does pick up an answer to this juggler, but he had to slow down because that two-one snipe from RDU hmm. is bringing him back in this game. Like probably no other card could have at that stage. I mean, what do you do? You can't play defender Vargas yet. Um. Well, that's a tricky one. But if you attack, no. If you attack the scientist, it's pointless. Yeah, I'm trying to work out whether you can make a, a like big enough void terror. To I, just well, say, I don't care about your right? explosive you traps. I'll race you with exactly. one big minion. You just make one big void yeah, terror I, by killing the spiders, yeah, yeah. right? I think but you no. should trade first, though. Well, it depends. Oh, he's doing it that way. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. I didn't know if he was going to trade in with the imp gang boss and use the 1-1 one, one oh, that's going to spawn king. otherwise. Oh, he's just smorking. He's forcing the hunter to make trades. If, uh, there, if there's an unleash, you see explosive trap come out. Then you're protected anyway, because you're not attacking into that trap. Yeah. And you have the one ones to deny the snakes. You just have to dodge the unleash. Yeah, I don't if, know. I, yeah, if you traded first though, couldn't you just gain the additional one one from the? Yeah, exactly. The one one imp doesn't do anything. Yeah. That's why I was worried that he just it doesn't kills didn't snakes. Attack. That's it. It kills a creeper's little one ones and kills snakes. That's all it does. Yeah, but would you not rather have the extra health, the extra plus one health to six instead of five? Mm. Against what? I'm not sure what. It helps. I guess it helps with a kind of kill command or quick shot play, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, like unleash quick shot would, in fact, put you in a very bad spot because he attacks first and he unleashes. Yep. And then quick shots your four or five. So maybe that one extra health would matter in that case for sure. I just think if if you plans to make the biggest minion you can to ignore explosive traps, then you make it as big as you can make it, right? Yeah. So do you smork if you're visual here with that unleash? I don't think so. Because yeah. if you smoke, then you're telling your opponent. Make him trade. I mean, you make a trap, right? Like, make him, make him trade. Yeah, Because e you have a snake, way. though. You have to make room for that snake trap. <laughs> it's a giveaway. Yeah, but do you, if he trades and it doesn't spawn the snakes, is that so bad for him? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a complete waste of the trap. Because... You might as well, because you're, you're trading hounds for But, but the, ga the, the, the gain he takes by trading, like attacking with all the hounds, plus... Also, you, like the two damage, how relevant... Yeah, is. versus all the hounds attacking face, then your opponent has to trade. Yeah. Because you still filled the board, and if your opponent trades, then you've gained another turn of damage. So you sacrifice two hounds to gain three snakes. I think it's, I think it's yeah. worth it. 
but we'll see what RDU thinks. Right now, he picked up the, like the fact that he has defender is absolutely insane. But I think this is the turn when you just have to play double die wolves. Double yeah. die wolf, and you go face with everything. You check that you have. check with the spider on the far left, maybe, yeah. mm -hmm. with for the explosive. Does mm -hmm. he know what it is mm -hmm. yet? No. I mean, it, it kind of got given away. <laughs> It, it kind of got given away, or it's just a really clever bluff. So checking first with the Spectre Spider is yep. needed, and yeah, now he knows it's Snake Trap. So he just ignores the minions because he has the Defend of yep. Argus, right? So there are two options. Either you play uh, the Dark Island Wolf, which is better target for Defend of Argus next turn, yep. or you like go this. for the Double Die Wolf, which have the same... Uh, sorry, plus one damage. The, they give plus one damage on the board. Actually, yeah, it's plus one. So there's no difference here, but having those two huge yeah. tones. Argus next turn is going to be massive. Yeah. Uh, Visual is probably not going to trade at any point here. He sees, oh, I've got Arcane Golem, I've got the Unleash, I've got the Trap. I can probably just go full face and be, be fine with it. But he's going to have to be scared of Doomguards and POs. He has to be so, scared of Argus. Yeah, he's, he's, well, he's scared of everything yeah. at this stage. You know, the POs, the Doomguards, he's on 13 health. There's 10 damage on board. So. So he needs, to, he needs to set the 4-5 and the 4-4 four, four to 1. To which guarantee he, they die. Which involves him trade, like taking face damage, right? Well, what it involves is using your second Unleash. Yeah, yeah, he can use, yeah, he can use Unleash, actually. I think that's, that's good, because you guarantee the explosive trap. Because if you don't do it, if you set them to 2, you, you're screwed. You get like, a, few, you get a few, you. few turns of free hero powers is what's happening. Yeah. By doing it this way. So. I think setting them to one, though, he has to spot it, not two. It's got to be one. Oh, uh-oh. Yeah, we... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> and that looks like it's game just because of that. Maybe. Is it game? No, it's Looking not, because 10. the explosive trap uh, yeah. deals with the one one. Yeah. Close enough. He's gonna oh, wait, it's okay. That was game, right? No, it's not. Ten. Uh, no, he's got... Well, he's one up. Wait. One off. One off. Yeah, one off. One, one off. off. He's one because yeah. he can't play the Dire Wolf with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One minute off, one damage off. But he's on 17 health, so he should be okay. I think he'll live. Yeah, should be. You can just trade the one ones into the. Uh, oh, no, he doesn't want to make the snakes. Don't make snakes. Yeah. You just attack. Argus attack. Yeah. Argus attack, then you have 12 damage this turn. But I'll probably just play the Dire Wolf Alpha instead. Of the. the... Just so you two off. Yeah. So two, two offs, which. Actually, is it better? I mean, I feel like the difference is a minor one. I'm trying to figure out if there's ever a reason where you'd prefer... Your opponent will trade the two hounds into, into the, the... I think the abusive trades, yeah. The, the, the abusive trades less well with the board is the only uh, big drawback. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, are you on 15 here? He's going to be able to get himself 11 damage in, which means that... Uh, Visual is going to feel a lot of pressure. Uh oh. Owl. Okay. Does that help? Well, actually, it might help clear the entire board, is what it might help do. Why? No, it doesn't. Because you run the 1 1s into the 1 health minions anyway. But is it. Yeah, it doesn't actually lethal, change anything. I don't Surely think not. it is. So. The 2 uh, one four, going at the 4 for 6, 10. It's 10 damage. Yeah, it's not. But that means that RDU, if he doesn't top deck a win, does, just doesn't have a minion on the board to finish the game. Because at two health, it looks like, you know, Visual is on the brink of death, but RDU still has to top deck. And then he's dead if he doesn't. Well, he can get a Peddler into an, an Stontas Boar. That's right. True. He can get a Stontas Boar. Is there any other one drop? Well, Arkan, uh, sorry, Elven Outro would have been lethal if he would have used the Abyss of Surgeon last turn. Oh, please let it not happen. <laughs> Even Stontas Boar would be lethal in that case. Yeah, without, without, but he has like double. Buffs. Double buffs yeah. in his hand. Yeah, yeah. Any other charge, charge minions for one mana? I don't think so. Yeah, that, like the boar is the only one, right? Yeah. On one mana for uh, for warlocks, what can you find? There's there's really nothing. There's void walker, but really nothing else. A coil would help him cycle if he picks up the peddler. Yeah, silence that spider. So now he needs either just way to finish up the game, and that's not it, or or a way to deal with that 4-2, like implosion. Yeah, he's dead. If he, if he doesn't he tap into tap, an answer, yeah. he's dead. So that's his last tap. His absolute last tap. And RDU is praying. Ah, it is implosion. He does it. 
And he picks up a way to handle the golem for sure, guaranteed. Yeah, it's going to hit for at least two, we hope. Well, no matter what, you just play the egg, right? Worst case scenario, you buff that up. But yeah. now if Visual yeah. has a top deck, and everything in his deck deals damage. Here we Almost go. Almost everything. That's oh, that's the the oh my god! <laughs> what were you saying, Noxious? I was everything saying, in the deck there's deals like, there's damage a mad except scientist, for that one There's card. a juggler, there's a creeper, that's all <laughs> there is. Six cards, and he already played one juggler. No, one no, no. Creeper, no, no. One, one creeper, one creeper, but no, no jugglers. Oh, I think he played one very early in the game, and already had to man maneuver around it. There was a creeper turn, and then the juggler. Uh, yeah, he played his, juggler, didn't he? Oh, that, that was from his last game. Oh, that, no, that was last game. Yeah, yeah, sorry. This, yeah, that this, was, either way, game. one off lethal for Visual here, who's staring this down and he's thinking, can I make trades and live? But RDU doesn't care. He's like, yeah, I got buffs. If anything lives on this board, I win. I just dodged a bullet and I can come back. Wow, what a game. What This is this has happened way too often. <laughs> for a bad matchup, RDU pulled it off brilliantly. Wow. I mean, there, there was some few very close close for both players, like the, the fact that Visual didn't trade to the minions with to to leave one. It and one HP. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. that pretty much decided the game, actually, because there just wouldn't have been the same level Ten of damage, damage coming out. Ten, yeah, straight up. damage, straight up, lost for RDU. No way of winning the race, no way. And it only would have taken two damage, like, it was yeah. two dogs. They, that's all they had to sacrifice. That's the crazy. only way to win would have had it, like, if he'd been holding at that stage two eggs, let's say. But that's, like, a very fringe case. And there's no way that he could have had those. Like, we saw his deck, right? Yeah. Or his hand. And he just didn't have the answers at that stage. So, RDU must be feeling relieved, but now it's Tempo Mage versus the Zoo. How do you uh, reckon mm. that's going to go? That's actually a very close call. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm just trying to think about how all the uh, mechanics of the decks work out. That's actually a tough one. Um, because sometimes the Flame Waker doesn't do much versus Zoo, but then oh. sometimes it does. Right, really there's, weird. there's it, times it, where it depends just on board state, game. and you oh. know, Squire, Egg, and Peddler, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good start. Double Mana Worm, though, how do you beat that? Okay, it's not the double. Right. <laughs> I, was like, what the I, I, was, I was going for it. And actually, the Flame Cannon already in hand to deal with the 4 4 Nerubian, if you can proc it, is pretty big. If it's mm -hmm. just the minion on the board. The second you start having to play like 50 50s with Flame Cannon, it can go very wrong. Yeah, but look at that hand, man. He's on the coin, he's got the portal. Anything can happen, and it could get very nasty. But RDU is going to set up the egg so that he get, if he gets abusive or the PO from. Oh my the... god. Okay, no, this is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is bad. This is really an awesome hand. But he has to play it properly. You have to play it well, because there are ways to mess this up. And I mean, if you're over-eager with when you, you, you pull the trigger on this entire sequence of cards. Well, for example, we saw Vigil in the previous set, um, when he played his Tempo Mage. He played Arcane Missiles, when the following turn he had four mana to go Flame Waker Missiles. Yeah. And the missiles happened to hit the Peddler for two, and the Zombie Child for one, which cleared the board. But if that didn't clear the board, then he played Sorcerer's Apprentice, which would just yeah. die. But he played so it well. It was, a, it was really yeah, risky. This time he played really well with yeah. the uh, with the hero power instead. I like that. See, what we were talking, uh, you know, to you about that is uh, I feel like he stepped up his game from yesterday. He does make yeah. plays sometimes that feel a bit mm -hmm. shaky, mm -hmm. uh, but yesterday was really a very different story. He seemed to make a lot more misplays. Now, a little bit more on point. Yes, and this is what I was talking about earlier. Suddenly, the Flame Waker combos don't look so nice. Well, wh why not? Oh. You just coin, attack with the mana of them into the to, to, to yeah. the egg, yeah. then flame cannon. You have a 50-50 to kill the 4-4 and almost instantly take control of the whole That's game. Yeah. I mean, you can even do that uh, like later, but if defenders start coming out, if the egg is popped and you, you're not able to, like, it, it, the health is just out of range, then suddenly it's not nearly as good. Mm -hmm. I would also think about the Sosa's Apprentice into Frostbolt if I would be sure that my opponent doesn't have abuse of certain Yeah, hand. exactly. And now he has to analyze, was it a case that there will be an abuses, abuse of certain already played? And I think it was, right? Because it will have been used on the mana for less than instead of the um, of the Imp Gang Fox. Just to get rid of the 1-2. Yeah. Just get, get the 4-4 four, four already on board. All right, he's going to go for the portal and uh, he's going to attack face. We won't probably get to see what the portal contains. It's a Murloc. Did well, that's actually, it? you can play it. That's good. It's yeah. uh, more stuff on the board. And it's, it's a one mana free, too, which is okay. 
Peddler? Definitely Peddler. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the Sorcerer Apprentice has to die no matter what. Ooh. And the Coil Mortal lets coil. you a little bit later down the line. Oh, you could play bird. Double Flame Imp. This and that, oh, that's very, very risky. What about the Jouster? Can't you give it a shot? Yeah. Is the Coil just that much better? Because the 2-3 for one, it's kind of appealing if you win it. If, if it loses... Yeah, it's it, devastating. Granted. You can't really make a comeback, too. And the Coil with this Creeper, really... I like this setup yeah. way more. It's, it's way more um, flexible in the upcoming turns, especially with the Mortal Coil, so you can just finish up anything that will be hit on board. Like, even if there will be a Flame Waker with Coin and a Frostbolt or whatever, you still have options to kill that Flame Waker next turn, because you need to deal free damage into it when your board is pretty resilient. Yeah. yeah. Whatever will be happening with the with the pinks. But now what Visual has to do is pop the egg prior to anything if he wants to. Like, you know, you pop the egg first and then maybe you frostbolt the 4-4. Four four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to do anything here with the Flame Waker, it has to be in a very specific order. Going all in on the pinks here risks a lot of them being wasted away. Oh, unless see. you double buff the worm. Well, that's uh, kind of bad. Well, you, you yeah. could double buff the worm. I wonder whether you want to pro yeah, pro pro the, uh, the egg with the 3-2. Would you frostbolt something else over there? Frostbolt the man of them? Seems like <laughs> very yeah. good. It didn't no, look no. like the hoverer was right on that one. <laughs> yeah, I feel like maybe attacking the spider and then popping the egg with the frostbolt and trading away the mana yeah. worm into it gives you a lot more chances of getting things done. Because now you're just spawning an imp, and uh, that might not do very much. And if he's smorking with this, that's maybe too aggressive, but kind of works for him right now. Let's see what are the options. Oh my god! That's a good draw. Yeah, couldn't have been much better with that coil to complement the kill. So you can clear Mortal Coil the the Man of first, because that's what you have to get rid of too. And you have former damage to kill the Flame Worker also, yeah. but you can first see what is the draw in case it will be a defender of Argus. Oh, well, that's... Uh... But I think you still go for Things Hunter, have to Creeper, kill Abusive Sergeant, and Flame. Yeah, you have to kill and the Flame. You just play all the minions. You've just yes. seen a Flame Waker go all in on Frostbolt. Yeah. And if there's an Arcane Missile on the back end, or any spell for that matter, you don't want it to give more value than it already does. Yeah, agree. And from and and the next thing, you just make sure that you would taunt up Hunted Creeper with the Fall Fall. Yeah. So you have great wall. That has to be first breached by, by the minions from uh, Temple Mage. The Wall of Romania. <laughs> yeah, this is looking very good for RDU right now. Visual could pick up some crazy swing cards, but the Drake, not appealing. You're just sacrificing your 4-4. Uh, your I, I kind of would like to see the Flame Imp uh, from the other side of the 4-4 minion. Yeah, just, just in, in case, case that's cleared. Just in case that your Defender of Argus will have to buff uh, the Hunted Creeper and the 3-2 when the 4-4 four four will die. Yep. Because there's an option that the opponent will just ping the 4-4, four four, and then you don't want to buff the 2-1-1 two, two, the one one into a taunt, because it's it's just kind of useless. Yeah. And you've also seen one Frostbolt putting the Flame Imp to yeah. 3 health. It's like, well... It's yeah. very awkward it's for most of the It's a much better health range yeah, than yeah, 2. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're visual here, you've already played the Frostbolt. You have two Fireballs and a Frostbolt left in your deck. Do you go all in? No, you just play the Drake. And just no, play I mean, the Drake you, and do you go all in? on hoping to find the damage in your deck, right? Yeah. Um, I think... Or do you start trading with the 1-1s? Like, it doesn't make much sense to me. No, I think you... Because you've got Dr. Boom as well, and even against this zoo board, although it's it's very threatening, you're on pretty much full health, so you've got some time at least. Um, I think if you can push to Dr. Boom and then uh, hope That's that ends again. That's even better, right? Yeah. I mean, this low seb is... crushing. I, you might wait a bit if you feel like... You, you might wait like one or two turns, perhaps for turn eight, depending. Maybe turn your, your turn seven, that is. Um, I don't know, I would just... Defender looks just really good. Trade the Imp and the 1-1 one, one away as well, and then just play Lothab. Uh, what does your opponent do to that board? Yeah, Flame Strike's not even an option in a deck like that, and on six mana, there's nothing you can do. Like, yeah, well... How, and then, like, you can Argus the Lothab and the 4-4 four, four next turn. Yeah, that looks good. That looks... Uh, as well as Tap. Pretty unma like, unmanageable, basically. I like is that. Are you just going all in? I mean, it's fine. It's, if he's being aggressive here, it's a perfectly fine play. I mean, he can trade Flame Imp and 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I did. yeah, I mean, if he wants to Argus now instead of uh, Lothab, that's fine. I just think you do kill the Drake. Because it's such a... You're just throwing away a 3-2 and a 1-1, one, one, like, and keeping hold of everything else. Oh, go hyper -aggressive. he goes super aggressive. 
Uh oh. If that flame cannon hits the 5 5, and the fireball goes face, and the fireball gets top deck, I mean, the low will stop it at least. Yeah. But, I mean, there's a chance. There was. A slight chance. I like the aggressiveness of RDO here in this situation because it's, it helps him do, to win the game before uh, before there's a chance there might be some big impact, uh, big impact minions on board, yeah. like Dr. Boom, an example. Yeah. yeah, right. You play just because of the turn where you play Lothab, there's no way that spells come out, so your Lothab is going to get uh, a free ticket to going face. And on 17 health, that means a lot of top decks in your deck win the game, and the opponent probably can't kill you then. Yeah, this is a really uh, rough position for Vigil. What do you even do at this point? Because the second you start putting fireballs, when your opponent's on 14 health, you start putting fireballs into like the 5-5, five five, for example. I don't mind like fireballing the 5-5 four, the five five and playing the scientist, right? And then maybe hoping to get something as a follow, because you're playing Boom afterwards. Yeah, I mean, Boom's like the saving grace here, isn't it? Like, yeah. he just has to get to Boom and hope that's enough at this point. It does, it does make sense. Yeah. It works pretty well. And now RDU's damage output is fairly limited. Right? Oh! I lied. Yo. How much damage is that? 14, I think, if I just quick count. Uh, 11, I don't know. 4, 6, uh, 9, 13. 13 damage, yeah. Oh, it's I'm, like I'm, a little bit but of it, that. It's not lethal, but with low tab. Lo you play low tab, you kill the Asher Drake with the two 1 1s, and you push face with everything else. Yep. You're not scared of the two. Oh, you even, you even just sacrifice the Defender of Argus instead into, into, because yeah. you have more minions. Instead of just one little targetable thing, yes. right? Exactly. We need, we need, well, you need all, as many minions as possible to be able to power overwhelm. As many power overwhelmable minions as possible. Now, RDU here is just technically thinking about the value of having more minions as opposed to having less of them. Mm -hmm. That's because the last sure decision he's would, got to make. Yeah, you, you for sure would trade for the Dash Drake. Yeah and probably will leave the Mad Scientist on board, because he knows that seven mana is only a Frost Bolt possible. Yeah. So he can kill the Loaded, but then still he has five, seven, uh, exactly lethal with the board. Yeah. yeah. Actually, 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 no, this, this lethal is, with or if he kills the Mad Scientist. That was actually from here is, decision. though, um, Visual plays Counterspell, right? Yeah, he does play Counterspell, which I was going to say, the PO doesn't work here. Oh. So, but there is 12 damage on the board for RDU nonetheless, so he still wins if his minions don't get pinged. And right now, Visual knows I can't play Dr. Boom because I die. Unless RDU starts playing around things that aren't there. Yeah, so we do have confirmation that it is count and spell that is active at the moment. But like you said, I mean, you play Dr. Boom. If you don't play Boom, do you win ever? And if you don't play... I mean, if you, if, if you, play, if you play Boom, you lose. You lose. And right. if you ping, well, you ping play... Clock, clock, no, so if you ping face, let's assume you were to let's assume you were to ping face thirteen. You have fireball for six, so you've got him down to seven, which is not nearly enough for you to win. Even double fireball does. You can't ping face this turn. You need to ping the minion. You die. Right. You have to kill yeah. the two one no matter what. Yeah. So there's no way over two turns. Even yeah, after and this right is the now. issue, isn't it? It's like he can stay alive for one more turn, but the Ethereal following turn. Ethereal conjurer dead. with eyes block. And then what does he do the turn after that? I don't know, but <laughs> that's, a, that, that's what I've got for him to live. Maybe get a spirit bar that freezes as well. Oh, well, that, that kind of sucks. No Doom Guard, but still so kind of annoying. You, you probably don't want to tap, right? You might tap, but that's risky. Oh. I've seen a fireball. What could kill you? What's uh, the worst? I, I'm not sure. So you want Finley to. Finley reset his hero power? Finley allows him so to reuse right? it now. So yeah. he could technically heal himself Hunter or armor power? up. Uh, yeah, that's actually that's lethal. Yeah, Hunter, Finley into Hunter. Oh, God. oh, do please. it, please. Or uh, worst case scenario, you heal yourself, but you might kill him. Oh, yes. you heal yourself. Oh, no, you you go with the heal. <laughs> just just heal yourself. You're good to go. <laughs> Play the priest game. You pro well, to be honest, I think I would go for the druid. So I mean, it technically it's a good halfway point, and you win next turn with yeah. it, and you're still healing somehow. Yeah. In case. Because <laughs> there's a flame strike. Oh, this is good. I'm loving and this. A, and um, Alkin missiles, right? <laughs> then you just win the game anyway. But now, what if there's a flame strike? <laughs> it doesn't matter. With one card draw. Unstable oh. portal. Deathwing? A Deathwing is not playable. I'm sorry. No, right here, it's not yeah. playable. Yeah. Alec here for five plus the Whirling Blades. <laughs> 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 represents quite a good chunk of damage. 
Boy, oh, watch. You can yes. ping your own face. Yes. You can ping your own face and uh, be done with it. End the misery. Rdu you made it. To the final. He didn't make right. it. Right. But it is sort of a, a make it. <laughs> but it, he had it was an a unfavorable, in, unfavorable yeah. Yeah. matchups. Definitely unfavorable match. And the Sudoku is committed by Visual here. Rdu from the brink of death. Actually, he was close to losing. Yeah, very uh, close. Very close to it. Two games. Yeah, bro. I was wow. at. Yeah, I mean, that was intense for Adi, I imagine. He knew his lineup didn't perform well, and after the first couple of games that went a little bit downhill for him, he did manage to keep it together yeah. and, uh, and, and finish up quite Definitely well. played very calm. Yeah, very yeah, calm, yeah. no rush decisions. He was very strict about thinking about everything. Even, like, I really liked the fact that when there was the situation with the Azure Drakes, uh, sorry, with the Azure Drake, there was a 4-2 minion and the right. scientist, he thought about if I trade, what are my outs? If he gets, like, is that an option I will lose after? I will sacrifice additional two damage. Uh, and I think that the trade with the Mad Scientist was kind of shaky. But if you think about Unstable Portal, does it make sense? Is there a world in which suddenly things become difficult because the Scientist is on the board with Unstable? Um, it's, uh, really it's, it's, right? it's, the thing, it's, it's the kind of thing where am I going to get, you know, a juggler plus a peddler with a soul fire to the face, and I play boom, <laughs> which is fine most of the time. Or now, if, if someone reasons play. that, like this, <laughs> <laughs> after yeah. the game, I, I would call. Yeah, yes, it, you know? it, uh, that's what I, that's what I'm thinking with RDU. I mean, I think I think living the like killing the scientist may have to do with um, what could come out of a portal that suddenly just gives him extra reach, yeah. which suddenly for an additional spell on top of that kills me. Yeah, I think Adi exactly really exactly. displayed how uh, how controlled he can be. Like he went aggressive when he yeah. had the opening to go aggressive, and then especially versus the in the hunter matchups, he played like defensive and safe just up until the right moment, and then pushed himself to be able to finish off the game. Exactly. Well. So, so it's just really good control and knowing a uh, full reach of both decks uh, whenever in whatever matchup he was playing. And visual as well. Let's mention him. He finished in the top four. Uh, Super JJ and him are sharing third and fourth place respectively. So they're going. Home with 2.5k each, which is nothing to scoff at. Definitely. Second place is going to be either Legend Island or RDU going home with 5k, so they're both in the top, and RDU wants to get the win. Legend Island wants to get a big win, really under his name. You know, Bell, uh, like RDU has kind of a, a title already. He's got a few of them in the yeah, past. His reputation's established. Yeah, RDU is very established, and, uh, and Legend Island is, I would say, halfway there. Yeah. He just needs mm -hmm. to just push out one, I think, one more big performance this year and then go into next year quite strong is his plan. Well, and he won already the Divinity, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think especially um, a lot of the guys, uh, especially on LC, actually, uh, looking forward to the the fact that the ladder experience has changed a little bit and the way the BlizzCon points are changing. Yeah. And it's much more open tournaments with uh, no invites uh, anymore for and a the, lot of the next circuit. And that's something like, and especially ladder performance, which is something those guys excel at. Uh, something really like looking into have a strong next year. Yeah, I'm hoping we see more uh, more fresh names that would be, or at least old names, but you know the ones that we don't hear too much about. Yeah. Just kind of make it to the forefront. That being said, guys, we will be taking a short break before we move on to the last match of the day. It's gonna be the finals between Legendary and RDU battling for first place in the Insomniac Super Champions, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 